internet and welcome to the show Do You Physics! Today we're going to be discussing making babies the easy way, super digestion, and the mystery of the vanishing poop. I'm Hamster Mom, joined today by Kimothy, and of course we're talking about Larsal! <laughs> 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 Uh, In celebration of the new uh, Smash Bros. game, right? Uh, yeah, I was thinking for Do You Physics, I wanted to have a bunch of Yoshi-themed... Um, <laughs> a bunch of, uh, like, um, Super Smash Bros. characters that we're gonna be going through Do You Physics style because there's a lot of them that do some really crazy, weird stuff. But of course stuff. we're not just looking at physics in the, uh... <laughs> I can't focus with Yoshi sounds. <laughs> <laughs> we're not looking at the uh, physics in the Super Smash Bros. alone. We're more looking at what's in its games. Oh. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> making sure that we got that. Sorry, I found a Yoshi soundboard. <laughs> I was very excited. Sorry. Anyway, so um, there's a lot that we can talk about with just Yoshi because there's other characters that we're um, looking into that, well, honestly, we're like... We thought Yoshi was a really good start. It's oh, kind of oh, easy. Yeah. Like, these are the weird things it does, and people know that they, they've they seen things like this happen in animals, but they haven't seen these all happen in one combined animal. Yoshi does <laughs> a lot of very, very weird things. And I have just a short list over here of things that... Uh, we either want to talk about or briefly mention, like, and not forget that Yoshi can do these. Aside from one really outlandish, crazy thing that's not even on this list, um, in a lot of Yoshi games, if you touch, like, a bubble with, like, a submarine or an airplane inside... We didn't even talk about Yoshi, Yoshi transforming. will turn into that thing. <laughs> I... I don't know. If you want to hear more on transformation, uh, there's a recent uh, episode or upcoming episode of Pokedex Paradox on Ditto. Let's just shelve transformation. Because, yes, Yoshi can somehow do that, too. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yoshi just can't. But uh, either way, simple things that Yoshi can do that we all would be more familiar with. Yoshi has a very long, extendable, sticky, retractable tongue. And that's something that... I've got some more information on, because we have obviously a lot of creatures with long tongues, but can they do what Yoshi's can do, which is shoot out, like, three to four times the length of his body sometimes, <laughs> and, like, hit something with so much force and yank it backwards and swallow it all? I'm interested to hear this, because some of the research I did for this, I thought it was totally possible, and I just kind of left it at that. Well, for his size... I mean, you got, like, little lizards that can do stuff like that, but not for his size. Um, Yoshi also, Kim just found out this one today, asexually reproduces. This is a proven fact in yes, Yoshi they, world. They have confirmed this. Uh, there's several games that have confirmed this. In fact, uh, there's a really great argument in Smash Brothers Brawl, I think, um, between Snake and Otacon while uh, he's arguing what gender Yoshi is. Snake thinks it's a girl because it lays eggs. Otacon is, of course, telling him, no, it is an asexually reproducing creature creating eggs because that's how you make more Yoshis. And in, uh, like, the actual Mario games, if Yoshi eats enough food, eventually it will create an egg that has a baby Yoshi inside. And if you have a baby Yoshi from Super Mario World or other games where the baby Yoshi show up, they look really gross, by the way. If you have, if you've seen a baby Yoshi, yeah, I have. Um, you feed it enough, uh, like turtle shells and food, to get it to grow. It gets big enough, and then you can ride on the Yoshi. So then, I guess that the cycle repeats if of just constant gorging on food <laughs> to make other poop babies. babies. Yes, they're poop babies. Um, so other weird things that Yoshi's do that I just kind of glossed over was. Yoshi can immediately turn eaten enemies into hollow eggs. The hollow egg is a problem in and of itself. <laughs> right. <laughs> but instantly eating somebody, something, and not all things. Yoshis don't want to eat everything. Uh, there's like little spiky enemies that Yoshi doesn't want to eat. Uh, I don't think he can swallow a turtle shell. He'll put it in his mouth, but he'll want to yeah, spit he it back out. Yeah, he always spits it back out, yeah. Right. Uh, some turtle shells, when they're in Yoshi's mouth, give him powers. 
Yeah. Um, yellow ones, he can, like, stomp on the ground and cause tremors. Uh, red ones, he can breathe fire. Mm -hmm. A blue one, he will sprout wings and fly. <laughs> What? And then there's actually in Mario where there's also a rainbow turtle shell. He can do all three at once. That makes sense. <laughs> just to make sense. it even, make, make it even worse. Um, so other ones that I just want to briefly touch on. We didn't really research this as much because we have an upcoming do you physics that may cover this kind of stuff later. Yoshi can do flutter jumping. So if you jump and like hold the jump button, Yoshi will like kick his legs really hard, put in so much he extra tries, effort. He tries so he hard. He tries so hard. Uh, do I have that one? No. Nope. Come on, no. Oh god. Oh god, there's an advertisement. Just kidding. So Yoshi that was definitely it was not that third one. But Yoshi's like Yarrr! he's like trying so hard. He just he tries his best. And somehow that works. And poor little Yoshi is like somehow able to fly. I don't I don't understand how it works. Gimme. No, no, no. <laughs> I swear. He can. There we go. Yeah, there we go. He's like, he's, like, he's like flutter jumping so hard and he'll somehow actually um it's not like he's like a luigi like luigi sometimes in other games um he'll like uh he'll be more floaty he'll kind of just go to the ground a little slower yoshi can actually gain Get more height <laughs> by kicking man if i could have done that gym class would have been a lot easier i know <laughs> like dude, like yoshi on the long jump he doesn't make an arch he, he starts with, like, he a beginning of an arch, and then it goes, goes up again, yeah. and then it goes down. <laughs> it's got, like, two hills to it. Yoshi's jump is so weird. And then to further make his jump even more confusing, Yoshi can also do the ground pound. Yoshi is actually known for, they kind of argue whether Bowser did it first, but uh, Yoshi, the first playable character to ground pound. And uh, if you don't know what that is, basically, while in the air, during a jump, Yoshi, like, does a front flip. It propels himself down into the ground. Yeah, but during the front flip, you can neither keep going up or down. You are suspended in the air at that point. I don't understand. But you just, like, do a flip and aim straight down to the ground. <laughs> like, immediately, <laughs> with a tremendous like force, you're falling. Out yeah, you're head. falling <laughs> faster than gravity would take you. And you hit the ground harder. I don't. No, ground pound. Yoshi did it first. I don't. So uh, anyway, flutter jumping and ground pounding. I kind of wanted to like push those aside because there's more weird stuff that Yoshi's done that we want to get into. That's more unique to Yoshi. Yeah, more of like, um, how does it reproduce? How does it eat something instantly and turn it into a hollow egg? What? So we can throw these things. <laughs> what? And how can it eat them with that crazy tongue? Uh, and then this last thing that I just want to point out before we move on. Yoshi has shoes and a shell, and he has them from birth. How <laughs> <laughs> does he do that? <laughs> like, okay, like the, the shell on his back, I figure, is like I him. I get that. He takes like a Koopa shell and he puts it on his back so that it's more comfortable when so Mario like, rides yeah, on him. So he like collects the shell, okay. Um, where do the shoes come from? <laughs> like, is he not naked because he has shoes on? Yeah. There's a lot of, like, cartoon <laughs> characters that, like, they're not naked because they have shoes. Like, Squidward, he's wearing a shirt. He's not naked. But he's embarrassed if he's not wearing his shirt. <laughs> right? So, can, what does Yoshi's well, foot Yoshi wouldn't have actually any, look like? Well, Yoshi wouldn't have any external genitalia anyway, so. Uh, great. What Kim, does it matter if it's naked? Kim looked into the odd, uh, what, because no other creature's going to get offended? Right. Though, it's like a plant. Like, I'm not going to get offended by a naked plant. Right. Though in, like, Mario Karts and Mario Tennis, stuff like that, uh, they have brought back Birdo, who was an enemy in Mario 2, which isn't really Mario 2. It was a remake. It was some old game called Doki Doki Panic that they basically stole the character from, just saying. And Birdo is kind of being rebranded as, like, the female Yoshi, which implies Yoshi's male. Yoshi can't be male. I like, it's the one, male. he's either, I'm sorry, it is either genderless or female, and since it's asexually reproducing, it is genderless. So, what's Birdo? <laughs> Birdo is just confused. Wow, wow. Wow. I think it's the weird noises it makes. So, anyway, um, where do we even start, Kim? There's so much. Should I get into, like, just the simple stuff with the tongue? Cause that's a little, yeah, the tongue's pretty simple. That's we can easier. That, right? We have creatures like this. The thing that I was like super confused about was like the length at which it can move. 
Because I am imagining if you scaled up, say, like a frog to Yoshi's size, which if I'm going to guess Yoshi's size because you can see Mario stand next to him, though I'm totally thrown off on because in Mario Odyssey, Mario can go <laughs> to a world with real people. who are probably about five, six foot tall, right? And Mario stands up to their waist at best. So he's still like three to four feet tall. I guess, which makes Yoshi, yeah, somewhere around like three to four feet, feet tall, tall too. Um, if you made a three to four, yeah, I know, right? No, higher than that. If you made a three to four <laughs> foot frog. Yeah. And it, uh, shot its tongue out. The weight of its tongue <laughs> would, uh, you see where I'm going? It yeah, wouldn't work. Okay, okay. It would like hit with a ton of force and <laughs> knock something over. But I don't think it would be able to yank it back with that same force because it would be tearing its tongue. It would rip out of its mouth. For one, if it shot it with that much force. I actually wrote down, like, the process of how the tongue, uh, the frog, how a frog would use its tongue. I don't, it would, <laughs> it would shoot it out of its mouth, hit something with this crazy sticky stuff, however it works, because it can grab That's on anything, weird. and yank it back into its mouth. The thing is, those frogs are grabbing things that are much, much smaller than the tongue. Yes. So the force doesn't need to be that great. Um, so I was looking at things like, how do you get like that much force for one? And how do you get that kind of length in something big enough? Can I uh, <clears throat> go through and just kind of explain briefly how the frog tongue works? Go ahead. So sure. I, I wrote down a quote um, from nolgadtech.edu. It's a research on frogs anyway. The frog tongue projects out of the mouth using a... Tongue, <laughs> not dung. You said dung. <laughs> You said the frog tongue, tongue yes. projects out of the mouth using an inertial projection mechanism. The jaw rapidly opens, the tongue rotates, and inertia of the tissue causes the tongue to project forward uh, towards the prey. And so with frogs... So it's, is it spiraling? Is that what you said? Yeah. That's weird. Okay. And uh, with frog, the tongues aren't like our tongues. They don't start back here. They start up here. Right, yeah, and it gives them, because that, uh, she was pointing at the front of her mouth, this is a podcast, Kim, like, closer to her, <laughs> Kim. <laughs> right here, in the front of my mouth. <laughs> okay, thank you, you gotta say this stuff. So, um, our tongues start way back by our throats. Yes. And frogs' tongues, if you see, like, one opens its mouth or see it uh, eat something in slow motion, it's coming out of the front, mm -hmm. and the reason is because the actual tongue is kind of small and can compress into that spot. And the rest of that area is being used for that big muscle that's going to launch it out and then retract it back really hard. Right. That's what that rest of that muscle is. Because your tongue's just a muscle. So mm -hmm. the main muscle for our tongue is for dexterity and right. being able to uh, enjoy our food better. I don't know what good... like Or speech. Proper speech. If you held your tongue to I mean, that's what something that's really fascinating about humans is that we have the, the ability to articulate, and human language is like one of the hugest, like high intellectual things. Like, how the crap right. did we figure that like, out? Like, try and talk with your tongue on the bottom of your mouth. It's really hard. Can you do it? No, I cannot. Why would I try? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It was really hard to do. I was about to choke on my own tongue. All right, so. That's like what our human, obviously the tongues are very different. They have different purposes. So, um. And, and the thing I thought was kind of cool is that the tongue goes out and then because it's in the front of the mouth, it essentially like throws the, whatever it's eating to the back of its mouth. Because right. when the tongue retracts. It, it yanks does, back in. Yanks back in and throws it in whatever it's okay, trying to eat. So that's a frog That's just a tongue. brief definition a of a normal frog size amphibian frog. tongue. That's like the size of your fist. Yeah, okay. so it's going to be like any amphibian's frog. Yoshi's bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, great. Um, so we assume Yoshi is uh, three and a half feet tall. or no, so Yeah, like we two, were saying about like about three and a half feet tall. Okay, yeah. so if that's how tall Yoshi is... Um, I'm gonna have to try and steal a tongue from some other living thing to put in Yoshi's body. Okay, okay, how, okay, like, let's see. Work. okay All so right, let's hear this. We're starting with like a giraffe. Giraffes have super long tongues. They have really funny okay? tongues. Okay, they do. Have, they, they're like long black. Uh, they look like snakes almost. These weird things. They're, they're they just for, they lick everything. They well, lick they do that everything. because that's how they feel things. You know, <laughs> if you don't have like hands and fingers to like feel stuff, that's how they do it with their tongue. 
and their tongue is more like an arm extension to grab leaves out of trees and yank them down. So, so it's a pretty powerful muscle, There's right? strength there, but it can't launch it out, stick to something, and retract it like a frog. Right. So, no. Okay. But okay. the thing is, the giraffe tongue gets from 18 to 20 inches long. So it's a pretty impressive long tongue. The problem is, look at the size of their neck. <laughs> I mean, like, right. they, they got room for that thing. So it was like, okay, great. That seems kind of, like, proportionate to right, their body. Right, like, to the size. Remember, <laughs> if I scaled that down, that's not that impressive anymore. Right. So if we get something smaller okay. about Yoshi's size, we can look at an anteater. Okay. okay. Anteaters are about the size that Yoshi would be, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, they're pretty I would big. Think they're so. good. Okay. Anteaters' tongues are even longer. They're 24 inches. And they are really sticky. Therefore, you know, even their heads are long mm -hmm, and slender for mm -hmm. trying to stick into crevices. And they'll, like, they're lick They're really up big on those ants. <laughs> tons and tons of ants. Because you'd have to eat tons of ants to be able to survive. To support that body mass that it has. Exactly. You'd have to eat tons of them. So, anteaters, you got 24 inches. That's, that's better. Um, still looking at Yoshi's height... 24 inches is you, nothing <laughs> no that's that's two feet that means he would be able to shoot his tongue out assuming an anteater could shoot its tongue out like with that kind of force and retract which it can't i cannot know um that means his tongue is only half his body length so when yoshi is standing there in your game and you you know you shoot his tongue out <laughs> how far does it go compared to his body height Oh my gosh, it's like three times the length of his body, Yeah, it's right? like, I would say it's <laughs> twice. It's at least, at least twice, twice, right? Yeah. So, that isn't even close. <laughs> his tongue is huge. Oh, I figure gosh. it's got to like go up in his nose and like coil or something. Is that why he has that big bulbous nose on the No, side? but then when he would shoot his tongue out, the nose would, it would shrink. Like, deflate. <laughs> it would like deflate. <laughs> <laughs> Come right back. No, so he can't do that. Okay. Um, so here, I was looking at something else. I was looking at, okay, what is something tongue to body length ratios, okay, ratios. that are impressive? Okay. Uh, there is a specific bat called the tube lipped nectar bat, and its tongue is 1.5 times the length of its whole body. Wow. But they're not that big. So. That's a bat. So what is it? Like four inches? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's bigger than that, but still. <laughs> No, but still, like, that's that's still not Yoshi length that we need, and right? And it sounds like... We it's... were even saying two times Yoshi's is cutting it close. Right. Well, he's probably longer than that. Some games, he's got really long reach. Sometimes he doesn't. Right. Um. So, the coup de gras that I was able to find for this ratio, okay. um, which may be the best one yet, is the yes. chameleon. Oh, I didn't because think the, about that. The chameleon, he does use his tongue... To shoot it like a frog, strike something, and yank it back with a lot of force and eat it. Okay. Just like Yoshi. And the chameleon's tongue can be twice the length of its body. So if we put that in human scale, assuming you know, you're trying to move that back in, that means our tongue would be 12 feet long. Okay, so yeah. we say that Yoshi's about 3 feet feet tall which so yes so he would get like a six foot tongue get like a six foot tongue yeah yeah so perfect if i could give him any tongue it's the chameleon tongue but the problem still remains he's you scaled, so small yeah you scaled him up yoshi won't work but i mean but still if you did um i found one more super weird thing about okay okay a tongue this. before we move on from Talking about tongues for, what, 20 minutes? Uh, <laughs> 20 minute uh, conversation this, about tongues. This comes yes. from Ranker.com. Quote, often categorized as the most explosive tongue in the animal kingdom, the tongue of the giant palm salamander can stretch to half its body length in several milliseconds. Ooh. The amount of power behind this tongue has been measured at about 18,000 watts per kilogram of muscle a record in the natural world that is twice as powerful as the runner-up, the Colorado River Toad. This adaption is most likely evolved to counter the highly evasive insects that make up a majority of the salamander's diet. So, wow. Yeah, this thing's <laughs> packing some punch. So, I, I was thinking, okay, that's a salamander. He's smaller. But based on what he is adapting to need um, from where he his lives... His muscles were able His to, muscles like, changed, yeah. yeah. So... Um, and if it can go with that ludicrous of power and speed, we can see Yoshi's tongue for crying out loud. So I've got a feeling that if you, you build it up, you get the right kind of area for muscles in there. Like, look at the size of his cheeks. Right. Those could easily be giant muscles to retract that tongue in. I feel like, I 
feel like Yoshi's tongue could work. Is it kind of like, uh, I'm thinking mouth-wise, when you looked inside the, oh, what is that thing called? What in, is that thing called? I don't know what In you're Monster talking. Hunter World, mm -hmm. you had that, like, frog-like thing, but the it's like, it opens its mouth and it's just like all this muscle inside of it it doesn't really have like a, like a dodogama yeah uh, yeah the blue guy in the, the volcano like, salamander area under looking like thing yeah. yeah yeah like you open you look inside his mouth and it just looks like muscle and flesh you don't see right like it looks a like a frog it's pretty flat right. in there and it's used just for a larger tongue though he doesn't shoot his tongue at all he doesn't no. but um still yeah i, I was looking at this like you know i think yoshi works yeah, I think, I think it's time So far, I'm work. like, okay. And for the rest of this video, I think Yoshi makes absolutely no sense. But so, I'm glad we got <laughs> some success here. Well, I was thinking that too. Because I, I thought researching... Yoshi's tongue was ridiculous. You know, like... I don't like, know. Like, I always consider it possible. At the length and power? I always consider it possible because of the elasticity of we see with, like, frogs' tongues and amphibians' tongues. I started researching it, and I kind of gave up on researching it because I was like, this seems possible. I don't want to research something possible. <laughs> Why would I want that? I, I guess. <laughs> um, so if you um, want me to finish up what I've got so you can kind of take over for the rest of the episode. All right. I can transition Let's us this. into a digestion, which is the next step after Yoshi has just eaten that poor shy guy. <laughs> and that thing instantly poor shy guy. can be turned into an egg. Now, oh my gosh, this is messed up eating something okay because first off it's not the same systems here i know right? we're trying to correlate the reproductive system and the uh digestive system they're not the same no but for yoshi they are but in some animals the end of the digestive system is the same that's Okay. Is that what you're getting into? No. Oh, but, because it is. Okay, for you. Okay, but still, <laughs> they're the same thing for Yoshi. Because remember, that's how you make more Yoshis. The main one needs to eat enough so that one of those eggs that it lays has a baby Yoshi inside. So it's same. It's pro okay. My theory, it's eating shy guys and storing that information. And remember, when the egg pops out, it's hollow, okay? If there's no e Yoshi in it. Is it using the genetic information from the shy guy to oh, create no. a Yoshi? Way more simpler than that. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's just saving nutrients. You know, like a, a, a pregnant mother okay, okay. is going to eat more for the baby, too. Okay. Right? So pretend that Yoshis are always trying to get ready for the next Yoshi that they're going to lay, Yoshi's right? Yoshi's always pregnant, guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes, Yoshi's always pregnant. But it's it's going to try and eat enough so it has enough nutrients for the baby Yoshi, okay? So if it's eating the Shy Guy, it's going to want to slowly digest the nutrients so it can absorb them and quickly get rid of what it doesn't want. Okay. Okay. So quickly getting rid of what it doesn't want could explain why those eggs are hollow. Okay, it's still eating the shy guy, mm -hmm. but what it kicks out is an egg shell, which I was researching. Some birds will actually do this because I was reading some forums of people saying like, is my bird sick? And you're like, what's wrong with my chicken? You know, because they can lay. Oh my gosh, I went way too deep into a bunch of abnormal eggs and I none of it was even <laughs> helpful for this, but I spent like way too much time on this. So long story short. Um, some birds or uh, not amphibians for, or reptiles from what I saw. So that amphibians, one makes... Amphibians, I had never really heard... I, I researched a lot into amphibian eggs and I never their really are, saw that happen. Their eggs are more made to survive in water, so they're more squishy and they can like go in and water. And in some most not. cases, well, in some cases with amphibians, they'll just keep the egg inside of it. Right. And reptiles, because I'm thinking like, what is Yoshi? Right. Reptiles will sometimes do that too, but they'll have like hard shells too, like yeah. alligators. Or, yeah. Okay. So it was like, uh, pushing it, but birds do. So birds can lay a hollow egg. And from what I found out, the reason that is, is it's something to do with the bird's diet. It's getting too much calcium or it's getting too much something that it needs to get rid of. And eggs are mostly calcium, right? It's, it's like a bone shell, right? So if Yoshi is able to immediately eat that shy guy, compress it, it like di immediately digest its bones, that's too much calcium, turn it into an egg, crap that sucker out and throw it at another shy guy in the face it's throwing the skeleton of its dead friend <laughs> and that just got really morbid why did you bring it up that way yeah she is messed up <laughs> so that's 
God, okay, and what I'm thinking is maybe he's not flash digesting this as quickly. Maybe there's like phases in Yoshi's belly where he started to eat one and then there's like two more behind him. And when he eats a fourth thing, it's going to force the last one on the chain out his butt, right? Right. Because there's no room anymore. Now, see, that's where I was getting like, well, that doesn't make any sense because it is assumed in most Yoshi games up until that point, Yoshi's never had to do this. He's lived happily with all of his other little Yoshi friends, right? He hasn't had to eat and make eggs. But then there wouldn't be any more Yoshis. Not the way that he... Not that way of creating the hollow eggs. Yeah, sure, he could probably uh, create regular Yoshi eggs, right? I, I don't know. Who... I, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. I was just thinking, I was like, well, you go here at the beginning of the game. He okay. doesn't have any backed up ones, so he gets one instantaneously. I, he poops it out. Whatever. So, um, <laughs> anyway, he eats the Shy Guy, and uh, Shy Guy number four, he doesn't fit in Yoshi anymore. And by that point, Yoshi's digestive system is so quick. This game really gross. It was able to separate the bones compact the bones and turn the bones into a hollow egg and keep the nutrients in his belly to try and get ready for his Yoshi that he will later put into one of those hollow eggs. Okay, you follow me? Okay. okay. Now, I found a creature that does something like that. Oh, okay. okay. So, right, um, this. and this is coming from my last quote here. This is from the American Naturalist. Quote, cedar wax wings, which are small birds, appear, I'm um, sorry, separated pulp from seeds and defecated seeds well in advance of the pulp, thereby allowing both an increase in consumption and presumably greater assimilation of nutrients in the pulp. We propose that rapid speed processing has influenced pulp consumption and seed packing traits. Though the hummingbird may boast higher metabolism rate, the waxwing has the ability to expedite the gut transit of indigestible seeds. That's insane. I, I wish know, I could do that. <laughs> right? So the bird's able to keep more stuff, like nutrients, like I was just saying, in its belly, ready Not for it. Not even bother having to process the yes, seeds. Yes, it stays with that, and it's like, seeds, get out of here. Because it's ready for it. So right. Yoshi is, I guess, like, ready for skeletons. <laughs> And they're gone. Okay, okay. But he's also eating, like, the Shy Guy's masks and their clothes. Oh, not, not in the Yoshi game I've been playing. He does not eat their masks. Okay. In Woolly World, he doesn't? Yeah, he does not eat their masks. Oh, cool. The mask like, falls down. Yeah. Yoshi okay. Does. Well, anyway, so um, assuming Yoshi eats this, his stomach could wrap it. If it's got, like, this cedar waxwing kind of digestive system, okay. separate uh, the nutrients for making a baby Yoshi later and the extra junk that can turn into a hollow egg, and boom, he got rid of it. Now, I have no idea how it floats behind him and follows him wherever okay, he we, goes. Okay, we don't even want to start with that one. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, unless it comes out with a really gross, like, sticky umbilical cord thing. I was thing, just thinking about and, that. And it bounces oh, behind no, him because, oh, God. Stop. And that's coming out of his stop. butt, too. Oh, gross. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about Yoshi's Here, what, umbilical cord. What about like in Smash Bros? Which you wouldn't even have an umbilical cord. That's a mammalian thing. What, what if when he eats um, Mario in Smash Brothers, you know how you're like stuck in an egg and you got to fight out of it? He put that. So they didn't even digest. Because it's in assumed in the Yoshi games, because I always thought because of Smash Brothers, whatever he eats, he coats in an egg and boom, it's out of him. Right. Because that's what right. happens in Smash Brothers. Yeah. He coats it in an egg and boom. In which case, no, I have no idea how he does that so quickly. He, he's just like an egg creating factory. <laughs> well, how about this? Um, I didn't know if you had more on that. Do you have anything else? Uh, it's basically it. Sure, go ahead. So I'm going to kind of lead on to that. We're going to stick with the egg. So I had okay. to figure out the process of what happens in a chicken to make it lay an egg. Yay! So <laughs> let's learn about what happens. Okay, at the I'm not going to lie. Time. This was on the How It Works website, which. How stuff works. Yeah. Yeah, typically they're, um, yeah, actually, um, I think I was on one of their sites and intentionally, uh, went to one of their sources so I didn't have to quote from okay, them. Okay, I just wanted I, I, I'm with you there. I don't like that site either. I just wanted to get, how does this happen? And, okay. and in this case, eggs, um, with animals that lay eggs, the digestive system and the reproductive system are very closely related. All right. So. Well, which um, makes sense for Yoshi. The laying process starts when light enters the hen's eyes. So we're talking about chickens. Wait, what? Light enters its eyes? Light is step enters one? its eyes, activates photosensitive gland, the penile gland. Okay. Positioned nearby. 
Once stimulated, this gland triggers a process that leads to the release of an egg from the hen's ovary. Okay. The orifice which the egg leaves the hen is called the vent. The vent. (laughs) Though the hole also forms outlet for waste byproducts, there is a valve called the cloaca, which separates the oviduct from the intestine. This is also very similar to amphibians. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad we're bridging that back towards Yoshi because I'm I'm still not sure if he's amphibian or reptile. I mean, he's a dinosaur. Now, right? chickens for the most part. Um, or he's made of yarn. <laughs> Yoshi. Um, mm-hmm. So chickens for the most part are able to lay one egg a day through the stimulated process. You've got to stimulate their eyes to activate their penile gland to make this happen. So I don't think that amphibians quite work the same way because they do not just lay eggs daily like chickens mm-hmm. do. So that was all a little bit separate. But that is a way of producing an egg without fertilization. Got the Yoshi egg laying sound. Oh, that's <laughs> him hatching from an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So <laughs> I am listening. That is the way of creating an egg without fertilization with a body that, you know, just creates it. So he, I really liked your idea of, you know, taking those bones, separating it out, and digesting it that it's way. It's calcium, yeah. But that's all in the same. So when it comes to, like, birds and stuff like that, that's a very similar thing related. The reproduction and digestion is very similar. Very closely related. Okay, in birds so. And amphibians, so. So this is actually, you know, I. It's funny because when we were starting to research this, I kept going to Kim saying, What on earth am I supposed to do? Yoshi's impossible. But so far, everything we've looked up is very possible and actually could happen. So I had to go and look up how do we sexually reproduce? Right. This is where I did most of my research. Yoshi, of course, would have to do that. But the thing is, that's assuming we're already happy with all the rest of it. And I don't really remember any games when Yoshi lays another Yoshi. Um, I, I In Super Mario World, um, I think you start a stage where there is a baby Yoshi in an egg and you watch it hatch and then you carry it around and you feed it. Um, it's in a Yoshi egg though. So I guess it's assumed it hatched from but, a Yoshi. But I mean, Yoshi. there are multiple Yoshis. It has to reproduce. That's my thing. And Otacon like, says. Otacon Ot- says. I trust Otacon more than the Pokedex, which it says. <laughs> <laughs> Otacon says Otacon that they says, are asexual. Yes, he does. <clears throat> okay, go for so, it. So biology dictionary. Some organisms that practice asexual reproduction can exchange genetic information to promote diversity using forms of horizontal gene transfer, such as bacteria who use plasmids to pass around small bits of DNA. However, this method results in fewer unique genotypes than sexual reproduction. And so this, what this is saying is a lot of times with asexual reproduction, there isn't much diversity. So, and because of that, it can cause an organism to fail you know like you're not getting that different strand um causing it to develop something new to make it survive better right so it's kind of just copying the same of its genetic code but this is presenting to us a different way to produce by acquiring genetic code from another organism but still asexually reproducing without using any kind of sexual reproduction. So you tell me it needs the genetic information from the shy guys and it could need that genetic information that way it can um, result in a more diverse Yoshi. A different colored Yoshi. Right, that's what I was thinking. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> Mind blow. Uh, Yoshi also, since I just mentioned that, um, <laughs> yo- the multiple colored Yoshis thing is another weird thing. Um, like, if, for those of you guys who are actually watching the podcast, you probably noticed by now, um, we've got like a little plushy Yoshi yarn amiibo who's uh, sitting on the microphone, actually. And uh, he's pink. She's pink. It's pink. It's pink. They, they pink. <laughs> they pink. <laughs> they pink. How, how many Yoshis are in there? They pink. <laughs> so, um,. Based on, and there's different colored Yoshis in different I mean, games. For the game that I play, Yoshi's Woolly World. Yoshi Woolly World, yeah. The most exciting thing about it is getting the new Yoshi pattern from the oh next Oh my gosh, world. she gets so excited about this. It is this. so exciting. like my main goal of that game. She's got to get all the yarns to get the new Yoshi, the Yoshi pattern. Because then you can play as it. So I'm assuming 
that it's not just the things that they eat that cause them to change their colors, but there's got to be some giant... Those are also made of yarn. Diversity. So I, that one I'm totally tossing out. In other games, how about original Yoshi's Island? Okay, okay. Yo in Yoshi's Island, um, each world is separated into eight stages. And in each of the eight stages, say if you're playing stage eight, Yoshi will always be dark blue. You will always play a dark blue Yoshi in stage eight. Um, and stage one, you'll always be green Yoshi, right? And they're basically doing like a so, piggyback system, throwing it over to the next Yoshi who's oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so they're not changing Yoshi... color. The, in that game, they are that color. So maybe your egg laying thing could have been like based on what they'd eaten in that stage. Or... So, or it could be based on the fact that that genetic, they got some genes from what that stage is to develop a Yoshi that was specially designed to help deal with its environment in that stage. So what I'm getting at is that you can asexually reproduce and create a more diverse genetic code. It uh, is possible, all right. even though it is a lot slimmer than what sexual reproduction okay. would be. And to toss something even more confusing into it, not all Yoshis stay the color that they were originally. But that is that can be a common thing. Um, like colored Yoshis in Super Mario World... Um, if you had like a red Yoshi, uh, no matter which colored turtle shell he had in his mouth, he could breathe fire. Um, a blue Yoshi would always be able to fly, right. sprout wings and fly. Okay, we're not, I can get into color. I didn't touch on the sprout wings and fly <laughs> thing either. But uh, in they're... like ground tremors, if he's yellow or if he's rainbow Yoshi, anything and he'll fly. Um, but in, let me jump ahead one more, uh, Super Mario Sunshine, because mm -hmm. people bring this one up. This one's weird. I mean, Super Mario Sunshine, there's fruit all over the place. It's like a tropical theme, and uh, you can ride on Yoshi. And Yoshi, um, you can't have him for too long. If he runs out of, this is gross, juice, Yoshi will kind of fizzle away and explode. He, like, disintegrates. He disappears. Also, okay. if you jump in the water, I he'll I disappear. I don't even want to think about what, They're just that. trying to take Yoshi away from you so you don't have him all the time. Because otherwise you'd have infinite water, right, to spray because you okay, have flood yeah, in that game. Yeah, okay. okay, so instead of water, Yoshi has juice. And juice is, he eats fruit, so he eats some bananas, and Yoshi can spit the juice back out his mouth. Just like um, flood on Mario's back. Okay. Okay, so thing is, when he eats, say, uh, a banana, he'll turn into a light pink Yoshi instantly. If he eats a, a durian or something, he might turn purple. Right. Instantly. And that changes the color of the juicy so sprays. So we have several things where this happens in nature. It's not instant, though. Uh, well, I mean, this takes, like, three seconds. You can watch it. It's a gradient that changes. Well, Is that long enough? I mean, like, I mean, octopuses can flash change. Right. It's color to match the yeah. environment. But I'm thinking of things... It's not camouflage. It's just funsies. <laughs> right. Like, and, why would that it, happen? And the octopus isn't ingesting something to change its color. No, it's not. <laughs> well, so, not two changes color. It could just be like an accident. Like Yoshi's just like, I love bananas, and he's just pink now. <laughs> and he's so the thing is, that happens kind of commonly with animals. I'm sure the thing, what the animals that I mean, like you, you eat a bunch of carrots and your skin changes. It does. That's that's like the pigment actually getting into your skin though. So you're telling me like when Yoshi eats something, um, he squishes it in his mouth and it instantly. Blast through his bloodstream, that color, the pigment, and it is all over okay, his so body. Okay, so it's not just a pigment, it's a dye, like a chemical dye that only exists in certain types of foods. Okay, well, like, so, what's the difference? Okay, so the biggest thing people probably know are flamingos. Flamingos are not yes. born pink. They're white, aren't they? They're like a gray color. Yeah. They're like a gray, white color. Mm -hmm. Flamingos will end up eating shrimp brine and like this blue algae that contains cathazax thin you heard it here first <laughs> that was like were you you testing Can talking with your tongue at the bottom of your mouth like i was earlier Can thin. i'm trying there she said it again. um but you gotta, that, the only way to say it properly is with your tongue at the bottom of your mouth here try again no like, i'm doing it at the top of my no, mouth <laughs> aren't you proud that she said that clearly for you now Thank you, Kim. Now I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so anyway, this is a dye that <laughs> okay. is inside shrimp brine okay. and inside of... Um, it's pink. 
pinkness. Blue, yeah, but it causes the skin to turn pink. And then there's another thing okay. called... So are there feathers still um, that white-gray and the skin, the pink skin is what's shining through? Well, it turns their feathers, too, because they're constantly reproducing, like, changing that their feathers. That pigment is just... Yeah. Like, okay. So it just becomes part of them. So if they stop feeding that as much, they'll turn back to, like, a white color. Mm -hmm. um, and then humans, a lot of times, if we have too much... Here we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> keratinemia, or beta, I think it's the same as, like... Well, keratin is the... Uh, beta uh, carotene, right? So, that exists in, like, uh, tomatoes and carrots and mm -hmm. things like that. And if you eat too much of that, it's going to turn your skin a little orange. yellow or orange. And a lot of, like, greeny foods, you can actually turn your skin to be more of, like, an actual, like, uh, tan kind of color. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so you can... There's a lot of research on how to have a lot healthier skin by eating certain things mm -hmm. that will create this healthier skin that will actually just change colors based on what you eat. Okay. So... Yoshi doesn't really need to... No. Nah. I don't... I, I feel like it's more of like just a for funsy voluntary thing. Like I'm It's totally not camouflage. Fine. It's happening way too quickly. But I, because it's happening with food, I would and just it, here, assume these also foods also only have... in like sunshine and maybe a couple other games well okay i'm just saying it's possible he can change colors okay whether it's through the weird asexual gene reproduction sharing or yeah. between eating something really weird right i think he can change colors anyway going back to the asexual reproduction this is that's kim's what I've favorite really part into. here <laughs> um there are multiple types of asexual reprodu pre reproduction slow down there it's are good. multiple types of a asexual reproduction as many of you might have guessed there I is, didn't guess, actually. There <laughs> is binary fission, which it copies DNA and splits, is what our cells do. Mm -hmm. um, there is budding, where a parent breaks off a piece and allows that piece to grow, and that grows into a whole new life form. Uh, like, I break off my finger, and the finger grows backwards, upwards. This and... is mostly with aquatic life, is how this works. I break so off my fin, like... and it grows backwards and makes a fish? So... If it was like a piece of coral that broke off. Oh. It would regrow. Okay, so like this is <laughs> so closer than a worm that you cut in half and both halves grow another half of a worm. Right. Okay, but that's not what. This but that's different. That's different. Yeah, that, types that's of totally budding. different. That, no, what I'm saying is that is a different type of budding because there are multiple types of budding here. Oh my goodness. Okay, keep going. So this is the one where a small piece breaks off from the parent and regrows into a whole new. Yoshi's now. not doing that. There Which is another is, thing. What is Yoshi called... doing? I will get to it. You don't need to hear all of the, the exposition <laughs> no, first. No, no, no. Okay, so the, another type of asexual reproduction is uh -huh. vegetative propagation. Very similar to budding, it will grow, uh, which grows new organisms from the parent. So this is the same kind of thing where it almost just kind of like splits in half and a whole new organism grows versus it breaking off just a piece. It goes in half and splits off, grows a new organism. We're still mostly talking about plants and stuff here, aren't we? Yeah, for the most part. It's mostly fungi, plants, but there are Why some animals. Why are you covering it? <laughs> I'm not done yet. Okay, I'm just going over it. So, sporogenesis uses spores to create a whole new organism without fertilization. So, like, most plants use seeds and stuff like that, but spores doesn't need fertilization. Spores just go and grow new things. Okay. There is... Yoshi doesn't do that either. Fragmentation, which is similar to budding again, but it's where the parent will break off into like five different parts and grow into a new organism. And then we get to the one that I thought was the most interesting. Where we should have started. <laughs> a gamonogenesis. What? Okay, and this is a quote. I believe this is still from biologydictionary.com. A gameogenesis is the reproduction of normally sexual organisms without the need for fertilization. There are several ways in which this can happen. Okay. In parathenogenesis, an unfertilized egg begins to develop a new organism, which, is ne which by necessity possesses only genes from its mother. This occurs in few species of all female animals and in females of some animal species when there are no males present to fertilize eggs. So the males still exist of that species, but the females just don't need a man. Is that right? <laughs> well, this one says there are no males present. So Present. They exist. They could exist. Then there was another version of this agamianogenesis called apoxymosis. 
A normally sexually reproducing plant reproduces asexually producing offspring that are identical to the parent plant due to lack of availability of male plant to fertilize female gametes. Uh, I think it's gametes. And gametes. That's, that's just evolution making darn sure that those plants don't die. Plants have been a lo around a lot longer than we have, and they've survived some crap. So evolution's <laughs> given them some crazy tricks. <laughs> so, so then there is also a third version of the game, a uh, gameonogenesis. So in nuclear embryony, an embryo is formed from a parent's own tissue without meiosis or the use of reproductive cells. This is primarily known to occur in citrus fruit, which may produce seeds this way to absence of male fertilization. I see. <laughs> How does that have to do with that guy? <laughs> so I kind of want to go back to that first one where it occurs in all female animals. It can happen. <laughs> it can happen. So this can, this to me makes Yoshi indefinitely female or genderless. I think genderless. <laughs> but I think indefinitely female because this means oh, really? that it's creating an so, egg still. So the species is all female. Hold on here. So can I ask something that's slightly off topic, but it's still kind of... Uh, more Pokemon-y. Okay, okay. Okay, so since the female-only species, because there's a lot of Pokemon like that, they can exist by this. What about the male-only species? Is there any way... They don't produce any kind of eggs. They can't. Oh. So um, <laughs> every male-only species in Pokemon can't happen. Is what... Pretty much. Okay. That, that's what this saying. It says... Like we were joking about another one. Weren't we? Uh, it was uh, with the Ditto episode. We were saying like... Uh, how would a female Hitmonchan do anything? Right. Because there's no right. such thing so as So that's it. what this is saying. So the parathenogenesis is an unfertilized egg that just starts to develop and a new organism. And the egg doesn't organism. exist unless it is female. Unless or it is a female. Because neither. if it has an egg and it's male, then guess what? It's not male. It's, it's female. It's not male, right. It's not male anymore. If it has an egg so that's it. what I'm thinking is that Yoshi is a female because... Okay. And after a while of it being inside of its body, it'll get all those nutrients from those shy guys, you know, that delicious nutrients. Okay, yes. And the organism will start to develop inside of that egg. Without <laughs> fertilization of a male. It does not need that for that right. to happen. It just in needs a, a lot of nutrients process. and genetic information Correct. that it's getting from well, eating. And stuff. it doesn't now see that could make it more asexual using this asexual reproduction where it's getting the genetics from the shy guy to begin to create another yoshi so it's getting different genetics from the shy guy to come into it get into the egg but it doesn't need to sexually reproduce it can still asexually reproduce by using the egg that's already inside its body and getting the genetic code from the shy guy to create another yoshi inside of this egg that then it poops out its cloaca Cloaca. <laughs> it's it's a nice way to combine the words anus and vagina without saying either. <laughs> Cloaca. <Wah! laughs> I need that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've heard. That's I've Yoshi's heard... TMI sound. <laughs> <laughs> I've used, I've heard the word cloaca a lot before because they usually refer to it with sharks because they got the eggs that right. are inside yeah, of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They... I know. <laughs> They do all that kind of stuff. You hear with Yoshi, and you're like, okay, you're going a little too far here. Yo so Yoshi's Yoshi can. Kloaka. We haven't. <laughs> so far, everything we've touched on for Yoshi can happen. In certain circumstances. No, like, he's possible. Sort of. Where did his shoes come from? Where did his little booties he come from? He likes little. Maybe he went down to the store where the little Yoshis make boots out of. Uh, out of string, and and they get them from from their little sheep friends. Are you telling me we proved Yoshi can happen? I'm telling you, I haven't run into anything yet that proved he can't. And I thought we were starting this okay. episode, and everything couldn't happen. But Yoshi doesn't do these. Yoshi does these things instantaneously. Right, that's the thing. <laughs> he can do it super quick. But still, I found like a bird that can choose what to keep what to digest yeah, that's really... and i found uh tongues and different creatures that can take that kind of power get to that length but we can't combine a bird and an amphibian no just because it doesn't and exist right plant. now like doesn't mean that okay your plants is pushing it 
but just because it doesn't exist oh here no well this plants, is some the, animal species that can do this asexual then the, the so. plants and the animals evolved over time to be able to do that because of a certain need there is no creature what right is now yoshi's need exactly if there was a creature that existed right now over thousands of years and was put into those situations where it needed to do that I feel like a Yoshi could evolve. So uh, Yoshi situations need to be that all of its males need to pretty much die out. Yes. That and that um, can't kill the species because the thing is, uh, like you were talking about the DNA and the RNA. Uh, one needs to though in a different episode, totally different. Never mind. Um, but D the um it needs to be able to randomly mutate so one of those Yoshis can asexually reproduce. So there has to be enough females, and one of them has to be the one out of a million. That when all the males die, all the females are going to die too. But one Yoshi is going to be like, I don't need a man. <laughs> and then just right. keep, it'll be then the progenitor of all Yoshis to come. Correct. Okay. Um, how'd that work? With his booties? <laughs> with, his boot, with his little booties and, and his, his silly dance every time he like beats a boss at the end. Like, da, 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 da. <laughs> Yoshi does a good. I think he okay. I think he's just supposed to be cute. Is that it? Like, don't ask questions. Okay, Yoshi's but the just animals cute. that you're telling me we have to combine to make this don't Are make not, cute. No, <laughs> no, not at all. And the original Yoshi design's not cute at all. Okay, either. so guys, he's this pretty is how ugly. we create a Yoshi. We have to have no males left. It has to be in an environment where it has to you quickly reproduce so it has to get rid of its eggs really quickly out of its body its enemies also or what it needs to eat also needs to be extremely agile so the opposite of what they are they need to be a very so that his distance. tongue yeah his tongue would develop like that there's also um yeah his digestive system needs to be instantaneous it does it has to go pretty quickly it's so quickly so that it can separate okay so maybe that was his thing is one mutagen of it got um dig this yoshi survived because it could digest a lot quicker than the other ones instead of having to lay around like a snake all day trying to digest something oh yeah 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 so, like most like, reptiles right just like like oh i just ate i'm so good for two and a half weeks right <laughs> do not need to eat again right but then like this yoshi learned how to like really metabolize things and like digest like yeah he's super like the quick. opposite of Reptiles, <laughs> but I thought I'm kind of thinking leaning more towards an amphibian. Is what I was is. leaning towards like a bird. He's got to have both, <laughs> but I mean dinosaurs. Birdo. But dinosaurs <laughs> and birds and reptiles. I mean they're, they're pretty all close. very closely related. So it's, he's not doing anything that's too far fetched from what I would expect this little dinosaur cartoon Yosh to be able to do. Does Yoshi have nostrils? Uh, yes, he does. Okay. Yeah, why? Where'd that come from? Because then I thought he could be an amphibian and he like learns to breathe through his skin. Oh my god. <laughs> this this soundboard has like ads for days. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, did we run out of Yoshi stuff? I think we did. I think we made Yoshi. I think we could genetically make a Yoshi. It's not going to be cute though. So uh, I don't know why you want it. I don't know. If you make cute your priority, like just on the outside then maybe you could do it with like the big bumbly nose how would it stand <laughs> like it would just fall over <laughs> i don't know I, I, we still didn't even get into the flutter jump and the ground pound i mean anything could like do a flip in the air and just land on its butt you know so forget the air suspension thing it's the flutter feet thing like even in woolly world his, his feet, feet turn into propellers see that makes it more plausible in that game because oh does it now yes it does <laughs> But the and other he also, games, he's just trying his best. Here, how about the thing we totally threw out in the beginning? Yoshi can transform into an airplane. Just throw it back out. Just throw a it back submarine. Out. Just throw that a one bulldozer, back out there. A mermaid. Just throw that one back. Though mermaids away. exist, right, Kim? They exist. Yeah, we can. Yoshi can turn into anything, <laughs> and he's pretty as long good. as it exists. Oh, of course, right? Like helicopters and all that stuff. But anyway. That is everything we wanted to cover today on Yoshi. I'm surprised we got this far and we got to find somebody who could exist. If there's any other like Super Smash Bros. characters or Nintendo, uh, any other video game characters that you think deserve their own episode of Do You Physics, you gotta let us know down in the comments below so we can start working on them for you. 
But either way, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and be sure to join us next time for some more game science. Be sure to follow us either on the YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts, and we will see you all in the next episode of Do You Physics. Bye-bye. Bye.